Hey there, good morning or good afternoon whenever you watch this. Um, this is Joseph again. Anyway, I just wanted to offer up another uh, video lecture in place of just, you know, a PDF of notes. So the reading was for chapter two in the Blackburn book, and that is on the concept of mind. And the chapter itself is a little convoluted and difficult to follow, no doubt. So I have your I have sympathies for you, but try to slog through the chapter and through some of his examples. Uh, here, I just want to highlight the importance of mind and then touch on, I think, probably the big, the single big issue, just the big idea of the chapter. Um, I know it goes into other details as well, and I have a, um, I have a discussion board question for you for week two. With, uh, with it attached to specific pages in chapter two that you can review. So the chapter is on mind. Mind is hugely influential as a topic in modern philosophy. Uh, this cannot be overstated. I think I mentioned this last week, but modern philosophy is essentially asking the same question over and over and over, from Descartes in the 1640s all the way up to the present. That question is, what is a self? What are you? What am I? When I say the word I, the pronoun I, like I am playing baseball, what do I refer to or signify with the pronoun I? Is there even such a thing as an I? Or am I, am I a you? Am I a me? Uh, I'm certainly not a what or a thing. I'm a subjective I, but what does that mean? And so the whole of philosophy post Descartes up through uh, Leibniz and Locke, uh, David Hume, Kant and Hegel and Nietzsche up through the 20th century, all of them wrote on the mind uh, from various perspectives. Uh, the origin of this whole debate of mind goes way back into Plato and Platonism, um, especially the soul-body distinction is probably the origin of the debate. So Descartes takes that up in the 1640s and 50s, and the modern point of departure is with Descartes' idea of what is often called um, as a kind of term of abuse, is often called the ghost in the machine. Okay, the ghost in the machine. Many modern philosophers want to overcome this idea that is Cartesian or has its origins and roots in Descartes. So Descartes proposed, if you remember from last week, that we are thinking things trapped inside of an extended thing, a body. And so we are two things in a kind of composite, we are, but the two things are wholly different in kind. So we have a kind of ethereal, ghostly, um, subjective feel, sometimes called mind, okay, or subjective experience or consciousness, okay, and that's rooted in thoughts and feelings and language. Then we have something totally different, and that's the physical body which is your arms, your legs, your face, your gut, and then most of all, your brain. So it is true, most modern philosophers don't think the mind and the brain are the same substance or thing. And uh, I personally wouldn't either. So there is some kind of bizarre, mysterious relationship between mind that is your subjective experience of the world, how things feel to you, how they are given to you and you encounter them, whether it's a cup of coffee, whether it's walking upstairs, whether it's hitting a baseball, I like baseball, you can probably tell, um, whether it's listening to this lecture, each of you will have a different subjective qualia or quality or feel to what it is you are undergoing at any given minute. That's your mind. Your brain, as a physical structure with C fibers firing away and synaptic connections creating a massive neural network, uh, electrical neural network that 
somehow generates your mind or your subjective experience. So this is the problem chapter two is trying to tease out. What do we do with this dualism between mind and brain? Now, some philosophers said there is no dualism, we're only brains. That's called physicalism or a kind of scientific reductionism where you reduce the mind away and say, the mind is a fabrication. We're basically brains. Um, sorry, one second. I need to plug in my computer. Sorry. All right. Didn't realize it was so low. It's probably going to shut off if I don't plug it in. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, parenthesis there. Uh, so mind and brain, back to it. The idea is the mind is somehow generated and related to the physical um, sense impressions we receive. Okay, But philosophers still don't know exactly how, and cognitive scientists don't either. They just simply know that one person could have a totally different experience than another person while occupying the same basic space. And it can be quite an innocent context. Say we're both talking in the kitchen table and um, there's three of us and we're chatting and enjoying each other's time and I really notice a yellow coffee mug and it really takes me back to my grandfather who passed away and he gave me a yellow coffee mug that said Daylight Donuts on it because he owned a donut shop and makes me have all kinds of, you know, feelings, familial ties that come up to donut shops and to that coffee mug because it's yellow and it evokes this whole narrative inside me. And then the other two don't even notice the coffee mug. I mean, what do we make of that exactly other than to say we are very much products, our self, our sense of self and personal identity, our mind, is not isolated or disembodied. It's not trapped in a machine like a, like a physical body, but it's very much a product of culture and language and experience and life history, um, family history, uh, ethnicity. So that's why philosophy of mind has been taking on cultural studies and race and ethnic studies and gender studies. Uh, taking that kind of corrective on board in the last 10 to 20 years. Philosophy of mind sometimes can be very technical, I'm trying to pick apart how the mind and brain relate, if at all. And um, it seems like that conversation has finally come to a bit of a standstill. There's not much more to say other than that we do have a mind and that physics and cognitive science and empiricism uh, can't explain it but there are limits that science has when it comes to explaining the subjective first-person experience of what it means to be you or me. And that we can relate somehow to each other even through empathy and through feelings and through thoughts, and it can't be completely exhausted or explained um, in physical terms alone. So, but the point of the chapter is to say we're not just ghosts in a machine, the mind-body, the mind-body world, uh, those components are more integrated than we realize, even though we're not completely collapsed into just being a brain. So it's a complicated middle way that many philosophers are trying to chart, that we're not just things or its, that we're human beings with genuine first-person experiences that need to be taken seriously. The, the discussion board question was going to ask you about thoughts. What are thoughts? Which will open up to thinking about, well, what is the mind? That how is the mind related to the world around it, to its body. And there I want you to try your best <clears throat> to incorporate quotes and engage some of the scenarios raised in the text. Thanks so much and enjoy this week.